I have made games, I have drawn things, I've written funny comics, and two years ago, I started making Minecraft videos. And a lot of you guys probably play Minecraft. Could I get a show of hands? How many people here play Minecraft? Woo! Pretty much everybody. How many of you already do Let's Plays or make any sort of videos about video games? A few. And how many of you want to start doing that? Okay, great. Uh, I just like to take the temperature of the room so I can ensure that we just deliver the perfect souffle of content for, for you guys' taste buds. One of the things about Let's Play is it's a relatively young uh, art. The Let's Play kind of started back with people playing video games in front of other people at arcades, people watching other people play pinball. But, you know, that didn't have the mass media thing that YouTube allows us today. Um, and so a lot of the things that I learned in web comics, I was actually able to carry into the new field of Let's Play. And so I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about different mistakes I've made, things I've learned, that sort of thing. Um, my primary focus, uh, and it's always important whenever you do anything artistic, I think, to have a, a primary goal. And so you can ask yourself, is what I'm making working toward that goal? And if not, then I need to edit it out or cut it or keep revising until I get there. And, and my goal uh, with YouTube and with Minecraft has been to make something funny. Uh, I make funny things in games and, and uh, comics and whatnot, and it's just like, okay, I wanted an opportunity to get up and be funny in front of other people. And there's like a local stand-up comedian bar, like a comedy club, right? And they're like, Hey, if you bring three friends and they each buy three drink tickets, then you get 35 seconds on stage. And I, th I thought to myself, that's, that's a lot of money for 35 seconds of practicing being funny in front of other people. And so I kind of got into Minecraft Let's Play just because I was like, well, this will let me practice being funny on YouTube. And if people like it, then I'll keep doing it. And when I first started, I want to tell you, you guys might... Uh, the technology required to do a good LP is expensive. But when you start out at anything, if, you're, if you want to draw, if you want to write, if you want to make video games, anything you want to do, when you first start out, you are just not going to be very good at it. And that's okay. Everybody, when they start something new, isn't very good at it. And so in the same way that a uh, aspiring painter does not need to go out and buy the finest brushes and canvases in all the land, you will not need a good computer to start Let's Play. You just need to practice Let's Play until you reach the point where you're good enough at it that you can kind of move to that next level. Uh, my first rig for recording Minecraft videos, I was using QuickTime Player to do the screen capture. Uh, I, I, I was like, what do I already have on my computer that can capture screens? And uh, that was one of them. So it's like incredibly choppy, like 20 frames a second. My uh, microphone for recording at the time was the earbuds to my cell phone had like a little microphone in it that I could plug into the computer and it, it would, you know, just kind of hang there and occasionally get whacked by my chin if I turn. And, uh, you know, that was one of those things where because I had already practiced being funny in other mediums, uh, doing comics and whatnot, I was able to kind of get to the point within the first month where people are like, oh, hey, you're really cool, too bad your mic sucks. Hey, you're really cool, you know, I, and uh, so then, at that point, you know, what, once, you, once you have people giving you good feedback and you have clear growth, that's when you start saying, okay, how do I get a better microphone? And not like, I'm gonna run out and buy a $1,000 microphone, but like, what's, what's, the, what's the reasonable microphone for what I'm doing? Uh, in my particular case, I went to, I live in Nashville, and Nashville is full of musicians, so we have audio stores, and a lot of pro equipment was available to me. Um, and so I'm going through the store knowing nothing about microphones, looking at all the different options, and you know, I've been doing this LP for a month, and uh, my fiance, now wife, is with me, and she's just like, you know, $400, $500, $600, these, these, are, these are a lot of money, and you're making none off this right now. That's, this is a lot of money. And uh, so I finally, I, I settle, I'm either going to get the $100 microphone or the $200 microphone. And I can't really tell the difference between the two. The $200 microphone has this weird thing where it's like suspended with bungee cords, like inside the frame. And I'm like, 
uh, that looks really cool, but I think it's a gimmick. I'm gonna go with the, the $100 one. And uh, so I take the microphone home, I record my first video, I love it, I'm, like my voice is so crisp for whatnot. I'm still using my uh, same iPod earbuds to like edit the video and listen back on the footage. Well, everybody who had decent speakers or headphones could hear this bass thump, 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 like somebody had parked their car outside playing music. Because apparently the microphone that I had to set on my desk, every time I moved my arm or hit a key on the keyboard, it would just push this heavy bass straight to the mic. And so rather than going, oh, I can return that and get the $200 microphone, I said, how many towels do we have? We have a lot of towels, <laughs> and uh, so I just uh, put two towels rolled up under my keyboard and another four under the microphone. That got rid of the bass thump. And uh, a lot of uh, doing audio work is going to be on a budget, especially when you get started. You, you want to avoid spending money, because spending money will not make you better. It will give broader reach to the things you're already good at. But like I said, when you first start out, no, nobody's very good at anything. And uh, so, at this point now, I've got some, uh, the uh, Marine Corps calls them boot bands. They're these little elastic straps they use to uh, fold their pants uh, so the bugs don't get in or whatever. They're like 35 cents. I got a bunch of those and I hung my microphone from a like coat rack thing. And that's, you know, super easy. Um, so, let's see, yeah, when you get started, don't worry about equipment. Worry about your unity of message. Like I said, for me it's funny. If you wanted to do something where you are the master architect, figure out what is the coolest way that you could create this master architect persona. You know, uh, like in Let's Plays, a lot of people who are famous uh, have funny voices or just big accents. Like the Brits do so well at Let's Plays because they have the best voices. And when I was a kid, I actually wanted to go into radio. And I was like, I, 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 my voice isn't good for radio. And uh, a lot of the Americans who do less plays, they have amazing radio voices. And so for me, I was like, well, what can I do with my voice that worked with the whole funny and, and uh, aggressive kind of persona? And so I realized, you know, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Before that, I lived in Tullahoma, Tennessee. And uh, there was this great guy that I went to high school with. Uh, had dreadlocks, he was half Japanese, wore goggles on his head everywhere. And whenever we got pulled over or stopped by the police for anything, he would go from like talking like this all the time. He was like, hey man, how's it going? Oh, howdy, officer, what can I do for you? And I, then I said, you know what? I'm going to do that. I, I've been stopped by the police. I don't have to talk like this. You know, why don't I just turn that into part of my comedy persona for the YouTube? And some people really don't like this voice, and that's okay. But what it allowed me to do is to juxtapose all the book learning I picked up at the university. It sounded like I came straight out of the sticks. And the Northern Europeans, they just absolutely go bananas for it. <laughs> they are just like, my goodness, this fellow seems to have a wider vocabulary than even my strongest of English teachers. And uh, so that was something that kind of let me have this gimmick or, or calling card. And it was something I was already entirely comfortable with because I had too many runs with the police being an adventurous youth. And... Uh, <laughs> So that was one of those things, but that, that was just kind of natural, and that worked for me. And, and everybody's going to have something different that's going to work for them in different ways. And so kind of playing your strengths, especially if you're young. Like, my voice, until like I turned like 21, 22, was weird. You know, I was still like a little kid voice. And, and if you have a child voice, there's no way to conceive that. And so if you just focus on the content of your videos and understand that it'll be a few years until your voice gets to where, you know, people will not find it uh, kind of confusing or distracting, uh, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, and one thing that I tell kids a lot of the time uh, who are interested in, in starting to make less plays, when I started making cool things, I was like, oh my god, web comics, that was brand new. And I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on that web comics train, I'm going to make good web comics, and they're going to be best. And, you know what, the people who were already making webcomics have been making cool things for years, and then they started making webcomics, and then they you know, catapulted forward. And because I was starting from scratch, you know, my comic stuff, you know, we had an audience of like 1,600 people, which is good. I mean, it's like a lot more people that are in this room right now, but it's still, you know, you can't make a living off that. Um, but 
the technology to make less plays like I make now just didn't exist when I was making those comics. And so even though I was frustrated at the time that my comics never went anywhere, what I didn't realize was I was training myself in all these different ways that would come up now when, that I'm doing YouTube. And so, you know, if you guys are starting with YouTube now, it's your first creative thing you've ever done, it might not go incredibly well, but as long as you make sure that you're always learning things and that you're learning to iterate and, and create processes where you can be creative and express yourself, well, then when the next thing comes along, like, I have no idea what the next YouTube is going to be or the next internet, but technology is just happening at such a rapid pace that you can just jump on whatever that is and say, okay, I already know who I am, I already know what I want to make, I'm going to use this new tool and uh, just master it. Um, so that's been a quick overview of LP stuff. I, this is not my phone, so I'm not good at keeping track of time. But the reason that Minecraft is perfect for LPs is that it lets people express themselves through what's happening on the screen in a, in a very beautiful way. People love Legos, they love building games, they love building toys, and you know Minecraft does that. Minecraft is also one of the only games uh, at the time, now a lot of other games started doing this, that allows you to use video footage of their game for commercial purposes on YouTube. And so I could go ahead and start monetizing my YouTube videos, which you know my fiance was like, oh, okay, now you're making uh, you know, a few hundred dollars a month off this or whatever. I see now why this is a valuable thing where I need to be perfectly quiet and that sucks, but okay. Um, and because, no, seriously, you've got to have, if we get back up and talk about life choices, if you want to make creative things, then you need to have somebody who either supports you or have no money. Like, wasting your time in relationships that drag you down, no good. Um, but I, I've been very lucky, my wife gave, she's like, okay, do this for a week, see what happens. After a week, it's like I had like 159 subscribers. And a lot of that was people who came over for my comics and stuff. But that's another advantage of your second or third project over your first. Um, but yeah, uh, with audio, it's a real pain because uh, the people don't only really have to support you like in spirit, but they need to like not be faking or clanging things together. And I know, especially when you're young, you know, it's really hard for getting your parents and your siblings and whatnot to work with you on that stuff. Uh, I have a five-month-old baby now, and so in order to record, I pretty much record when my wife takes the baby out for a walk in the evening, or when the baby's in the bathtub, because she really likes splashing, and splashing is quieter than screaming. And <laughs> I, 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 I have an improvised sound booth. Um, I live in a one-bedroom apartment with a wife and baby, and so what I had to do was I took our like front coat closet, bought uh, some acoustic foam, put a monitor in there, keyboard and mouse, and hung the microphone, from, like I said, from the coat hanger wrap thing. And so I, I literally record in, the, in a closet, because that is the only way that I can get things done uh, with you know, all, all that other noise. And so you know, if you really want to go places with this stuff, you, you have to be creative, not just in the actual like, execution of whatever you're trying to make, but also in finding ways to get it to work. Um, one guy that I talked to, you guys might have heard of the band Pujol, they're kind of big in Nashville, but they haven't really taken off on a national scene yet. Um, I went to high school with this guy, and he was talking a lot about like how um, you know they had no money and they had to uh, just make their own pop filters out of candy coats and coat hangers. And if you guys don't know what a pop filter is, when I go, puh, puh, you, you hear that, that like, uh, that, that explosive sound, because you're blowing into the microphone. Um, pop filter is just like a screen, like nylon cloth or something like that, that stops that air from going straight into the microphone. And that's, if you have a bad microphone, one of the most obvious things. You're gonna, you're gonna hear the bass thump I was talking about, and you're gonna hear the puh. And uh, so as soon, as soon as I started making the videos, and I realized like, oh man, I've got that same problem. Hey, where's my, where's my fiance? Do you have any pantyhose I can steal? <laughs> <laughs> also, I need a wire coat hanger. And, uh, you know, eventually I, I bought a real pop screen because they're only like $15. But when you don't know if anyone's ever going to watch what you make, you know, don't spend the $15 until, you know, and, and you don't even know if you're going to like doing it, right? If you don't know if you're going to like painting, then use cheap materials, give it a try. If you hate it, then you didn't waste a ton of money on painting equipment. If you like it, then keep upgrading your stuff to keep pace with uh, you know, your actual skill level and uh, to make sure that you keep pushing yourself. Um, so 
Yeah, uh, Minecraft though, because Notch is awesome and his dev team, uh, Jerobo and Jeff, those guys are really in touch with the community. Um, I've been fortunate enough to meet some of their team at Minecon, and I talk to them on Twitter and stuff, and they really do try to make sure that the game is not only good for all the players, but they try to make sure that the tools that less players and whatnot need are in there too. Like for example, if you guys go to the multiplayer screen, you know how when you add a server, there's that hide IP option? You guys probably never use that. The only reason it's there is because like if I'm playing a, if I make a video of myself logging into a server to go play, they, we don't need like thousands of people all trying to connect to that IP. And, and that's just what, one tiny example of how they've been responsive to us and worked with us. And so if you want to get into LPing, Minecraft LPing is pretty oversaturated right now. It, because of all the reasons I listed, because they're so great, there's probably a hundred times more people doing this than when I started two years ago. But if you're only, if you're trying to have fun and trying to learn, there's so much that you can learn about video software, editing software and whatnot, uh, that will help you get a real job or help you keep your real job. Uh, I used to design content management systems from scratch for a living. And I realized, oh, okay, I can also do this graphic design stuff because I learned all these things about color and shape and line doing my comics. So I pulled that in and that you know helped me at work. And then uh, they realized, oh, hey, our website needs video. Too bad we don't know how to do that. It's like, yeah, actually, I, I just spent the last two years training myself to do that, multi-camera video, all this stuff. And so you, know, you, you can use all of these things uh, to you know, pay your normal bills, even if you know, Google isn't writing you a check every month. Um, let's see, so I'm kind of meandering based on the public opinion about different things. Uh, what, does anybody have any particular questions or topic suggestions? I can talk more about networks. Do people want to hear about YouTube networks? Because that's a, okay, nobody does. So I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a 30 second warning. YouTube networks are a scam. And as soon as you create a YouTube channel and you start posting gaming content, some recruiter is going to contact you and say, hey, if you sign a four-year contract with our network, then you're going to be guaranteed X amount of dollars for every views on your video, for, for whatever number of views on your video. And when you were making zero money, 17 cents or $2 or $3 per 1,000 views sounds really good. But the reason they're contacting you is because this is a pyramid scheme, and uh, they get a cut, and then the people above them get a cut. And, uh, so some of the networks, like Machinima and whatnot, have real representatives that will actually contact you if you're a big deal and can negotiate contracts. But unfortunately, most of these big networks also have these recruiting arms where you'll just start getting, you know, like I probably get 10 messages a week about this stuff. And my channel isn't big enough for me to negotiate a real contract with the network. I've got 40,000 subscribers, and I still can't talk to somebody important enough to not give me a scam deal. So when you're starting out, don't sign anything because you, you can really you can sign away your channel for seven years, and that doesn't seem that terrible at first. But let's say you really get into it, and all of a sudden, like something the network does is problematic for you, it's just bad. So you guys might not have wanted to hear that, but you've been warned. Um, so is YouTube networks. Uh, do you guys want to hear at all about like playing with other LPers or like networking in that way? Some people want to hear about that. Okay, and this, this also applies for like anything you do collaborating with other people. Be a good person. Like, even if, like some people have this rage gamer persona where they're like really angry and they, you know, whatever. And, and that's the same thing as acting. You know, and if you want to do a, a persona that is not, like I'm real kind and friendly and upbeat, you know, that, that's part of me when I'm, when I'm doing the videos. But, you know, if, if you're gonna be this really, you know, angry guy, uh, a few things. One, don't let that leech into your life. I kind of decided I wanted to be upbeat and funny and happy because like life isn't always upbeat and funny and happy and I felt like people might need, might need more of that and also because like maybe I needed more of that. Um, but like you need to clearly delineate like, hey man, even, like, even if I'm joking around with somebody, I'm criticizing them during when we're recording something together. You know, I'll say it first. You know, I, I, I hope I didn't hurt your feelings. You know, that was just part of the riff, and you know, people are pretty cool about that, especially once you get to know them. Uh, repeat collaborations with people can be really great. Um, 
like going on like Minecraft forums and things like that and finding other people and contact people with about the same number of subscribers as you. Don't don't like just start if you start sending emails to like Sky does Minecraft, he's not gonna read them. Young's cast not gonna read them. Uh, they, 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 like they don't have um, the capacity to like do videos with every fan who wants to do a video with them. Uh, but like if you find somebody else who's also just starting out, it's like, hey, I've got 15 subscribers, you got 15 subscribers, chances are they're not the same people. Why don't we do something together? And then you start cross-pollinating, and you start making friends that are in the same point in their you know, career or trajectory as you are, and you guys can grow together. And uh, uh, honestly, sometimes you do stuff with somebody you never talk to them again. And that's okay, too. Uh, but like some of the people that I started doing stuff early on with, um, like those, those relationships have been really good for me just as a person, as uh, I like to think of myself as an artist because I make it for a living. But uh, you know, as, as somebody who does creative work, it's just good to have that kind of support.